Let's start. What did James get? Yeah, Seventy two, so he's number three. Yeah. All right. Wood or oh, wood doesn't. No wood doesn't. Yeah. Wood. James. Wait. And actually, you go. He just got first, didn't I? All right, come on. Focus. I'm ready, sir. Oh, yo, yo. Hey. Alexis. It's all captured on video. <gasps> I don't edit this, so. Oh yeah, true. Did you get the All right, central limit theorem. What is it? In the so, theorem. now, yesterday we looked at point estimates. All right? What we can do is, because we've got several samples, we don't always have one sample. You know that P hat is different from one, to, uh, from one sample to the other. We don't, if we don't know the P, we know the... Um, P hat, we can use the central limit theorem and you can approximate normal distribution. All right, so we need to think about the effect of varying N and P on the stability of the uh, suitability of the normal distribution. Uh, you will come across this again in spec if you're doing spec. So it's slightly different from what we do uh, in um, methods and spec. All right. And you need to understand the effect on a mean standard deviation of shape of histogram and so on and so forth. And what else do you need to know? You should be able to use a sample distribution of sample proportion to solve some contextual problem. Understand the parameters of approximate uh, standard normal proportion and able to use a standard normal distribution to solve some problems involving probabilities. And probably not the same task yet. I will, we'll see how it goes. All right? Now, yesterday we looked at point estimate. Point estimate, what we do is take a sample, only one sample from the whole population, and we use that to represent the whole population. All right? And I'll also show you, uh, so in that case, we have actually established that um, the expected value of p hat should be the same as the population probability of success, and then you can estimate the variance of p hat and standard deviation of p hat. All right? So those are from yesterday. And what we're now looking at is we've got different samples. Could be sample one, sample two, sample three. When you are actually picking different samples, you may have overlapping as well. Like for example, this two person could be in this sample, could be this sample. All right, you could have different sample um, of different people. But each sample will have different p hat. Right? So the sample proportion. So if you have got sample, several um, samples from a given population, um, we, could found, we could find a different sample proportion. So it could be P hat out of 500 people. Yesterday, using the same, uh, same example as yesterday, out of 500 people for sample group one, you may have 302 with, uh, who owns a pet. Group two, 290. Group three could be 300. And group four could be 310. How do we know which one is the right one? We don't actually. So we could use the sample proportion as point estimate, or we may be able to infer some results regarding the true population P. Okay. Now, it may be more useful to make some uh, probabilistic comments if we know how all of P had were distributed for some larger value of uh, I. Right. So we're going to look at how we we estimate, we actually model the p-hat using normal distribution. All right, sampling distribution of sample proportions. For repeated samples of sample size n, the distribution of the value of p-hat is called the sample distribution of sample proportion. So yesterday, not yesterday, a few days ago, a few lessons ago, we've had established that the normal approximation to a random variable, x with a binomial distribution of n and p with a approximate 
p of 0 0.5, we can use this. All right, xn is normally distributed by np, and the, there should be a bracket here, sorry, uh, and np times 1 minus p. Now, however, when we simulate sample of x for varying values of p, we need a significantly large number of n. So when you are answering questions in exam, there are two ways of doing it. One of the ways is saying that there's sufficiently large number of n samples. All right, the other one I'll show you a little bit later, how we use this np and np 1 minus p. All right, now this leads us to an important result for the distribution of p hat values comes to the central limit theorem. All right, as a guide, we say that the sufficient large sample size is n greater than or equals to 30. All right, that's an approximation. There are books which say that you must use 50. There are books which say that you must use 100 or whatever. But for what we are doing, our purpose, we think about n is greater than or equals to 30. And p is approximately 0 0.5, the probability of success. Then the sampling distribution of sample proportions for reported, repeated randomly taken samples from the population is approximately normal distributed. So we know that the mean is P and the variance is that. So we can actually say that P hat for the, for the values of P hat we get is normally, normally distributed with P as the um, with p as expected value, and then this is the um, variance. All right, p one one time p into one minus t over n. Those are the things that you need to know. That's a central limit theorem. So what happens is with the benefit of central limit theorem is that regardless of the nature of the population distribution, it may not be distributed um, um, normally. It could be. It could be uh, whatever skewed to the right or skewed to the left. It can be shown by a simulation that as n approaches infinity, the distribution of p hat becomes more normal. So remember, recall that I show you a graph when we had this on simulation. Although we've got the graph that could be something like this. But realizing that if we take this in the samples itself, this bit here is actually sort of normally distributed. Yeah? So if you look at the expected value, we could just use a central limit theorem and work out uh, p hat. All right. Now, this is the other one. This is the other condition. If we don't know, we don't, we, if we can't say that n is large enough, we should, we could use uh, n p, n times p greater than or equals to 10, and n times 1 minus p greater or equals to 10 as a guide. All right, this condition could be applied. If you don't know whether the size is large enough, and um, you can't say that it's, a, you can't say that it's approximately, um, Symmetrical. Now just remember one thing, this is what we use in methods in actually spec, you don't really have to think about that. Alright? You will come you come across the same thing again in spec. Okay. But in this case it's just like the you're just graphing all the proportions instead of like whatever it is. So like you're plotting just the average proportions? Yes. You're looking at the average proportion as the normal distribution as well. The no yeah. normal distribution is the p hat. Yeah, okay. All right. Now, you've got to really remember p hat could be the point estimate, it could be proportion. In the exam itself, it's very important to distinguish. Read the question carefully whether it's telling you a point estimate or whether it's di distribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, example one. A continuous random variable x is uh, re uh, normally distributed over interval 20 and 30. Can you calculate expected value of x and uh, standard deviation of x, please? Now, 
recall from, I think, I can't remember how many lessons ago. A normal distribution for uniform distribution, expected value of x is a plus b over 2. And the variance of x is uh, b minus a, all squared divided by 12. Yeah. Not this will not be in your, um, not in your, whatever you call it, not in your formula, formula sheet. sheet. So you can use this, write it down. I've given you those for uniform distribution and uh, triangular distribution as well. Go back and read, uh, look at the PowerPoint I've uh, created for that. Now, if you have class back, please bring it out to try to simulate uh, 100 samples of 10 sample proportion, 50 sample proportion, and 200 sample proportions. So I break three of three and three. So the deviation. What is the I didn't actually do 100 samples of 10 sample proportion. It's a lot to do. So what I'm going to do is show, uh, show you what I've done. All right. So if you could work that out, EX is about 27.5 and uh, the variance of X is 18.75. I didn't actually for my for my um, next slide. What what I did is uh, I did not generate how the sample. I just generated ten samples proportion, fifty sample proportion, and twenty sample proportion based on the um, uniform distribution. All right. So if you use a class bet, you can work out the standard deviation as well, which is square root of uh, eighteen point seven five. Yeah. Oh, actually, I asked for SDX, so you should have worked that out. Yeah. Now, so this is what I did with my class back. You can do it at home, or you can do it now if you want to. So I generated uh, one of these, rather than 100 of these. So what I do is look at the mean of this, mean of this, and mean of this. Compared to what we've calculated, all right? So, you can see that for the 10 samples, 50 samples, and 200 samples, as you get more and more samples, this is more and getting to be more uniformly distributed. Yeah. All right? If you do 100 of these, 200 samples, you can see that the graph will be pretty much uniformly distributed. Whereas with the 10, not quite. This is not quite yet. But look at the expected value. 10 samples, 28.08, this is 27.5. So it's actually, the more samples you get, the expected value approaches the uh, population expected value. All right, so is the uh, standard deviation. All right, so, you know that the sample proportion can only take on the possible range from 0 to 1. All right? It's a sample proportion. It's, it's, a, it's a possible probability of our success. The number of possibility of, probability of our success. The number of success over the total number of samples. So it cannot be less than 0. It cannot be uh, greater than 1. All right? It's always 0 to 1, the sample proportion. Yeah. Now, we can ask the question around the likelihood that a certain sample proportion in the sampling distribution is greater than, less than or between specific proportion. So we, if we know the central limit theorem, the p hat is normally distributed with p and p um, with the expected value of p and the variance of p into 1 minus p over n, we could actually work out the probability, right? You see the normal distribution. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So let's have a look at the next question. If we know the p values, so now you're given p. You're given p so that we can actually work out the distribution of p hat. Yep. 
so we can work out. Now let's let's think about why it is appropriate to appropriate to approximate the distribution of p using a normal distribution. Because n is large and n p times one minus p is also. Okay. Now, in this situation, you've got an n of 125. So I did say that pre, uh, in the previous slide, I said that n has to be greater than or equal to 30. So when you explain something like this, what you need to do is say that, when, what, what you need to say that the sample size is sufficiently large and the uh, um, distribution is approximately symmetrical. Yeah. That was like P is Later, I'll show an example where you have to use np greater than or equal to 10 or n into um, whatever has to n into one minus p has to be greater than ten. I'll show you that in a few minutes in a different uh, different example. But in this example, you need to look at just explain that n is sufficiently large and the uh, the distribution is approximately symmetrical. All right. So now you can state the normal distribution used. All right. Go back to this central limit theorem you need to write out that p hat is normally distributed. All right? Work out the sigma first, and work out p hat. p hat is therefore, a prox uh, it's a normally distributed with a mean of 0 0.43, and instead of writing the uh, variance, I wrote this one, 0 0.04428 square. Now, if the number is, uh, if this is not 0 0.3, let's say this is given to you as a fraction, in the exam itself, use a fraction. Alright, so there's exact numbers. But you're given as a decimal, then you keep it as a decimal. If not, if you're given as a fraction, use a fraction so that you've got the exact number. Alright? So therefore, using your class pack, you could work out probability between 0 0.41 and 0 0.46 is uh, 0 0.4252. Four decimal places for your probability. What's the range of the probability that will be approximate? Sorry? What's the range of that P has to be within? For it to be approximate? Uh, just approximately, you have to say that it's approximately, uh, that's... You, we don't really say like approximately uh, uh, symmetrical. I'm not going to give you a lower down, a low upper bound. Approximately symmetrical. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, I had a chat with Mr. Alfonso and see whether we should put a um, put a upper and lower bound. Say no, don't do that. Just say that it's approximately. Uh, okay. All right. Now, if you're known a p value, can you determine the percentage of values of p hat that would be greater than 0 0.5 for sample of n equals 120 being taken from a population with p equals 0 0.45? So you could work out, write out the um, distribution of p hat. Now, this time, really think about p hat as normally distributed. Lots of uh, lots of samples, lots of numbers. Lots of p hats. I would say. So you are looking at this distribution for p hat now. Norm CDF. Normal CDF. Normal CDF. Yep. So work out sigma, and you therefore you can write p hat is that normally distributed. You know the p. Once you know the p, just use the p value. And then the probability of p hat greater than 0 0.5 is just 0 0.1354. All right. Now, example four a p value from historical data. A company record show that on average 29% of workers have had one or more accidents in the world, work, workplace. The company takes repeat, repeated random samples of 150 workers. 
use a binomial distribution to determine the probability that, uh, that less than 10 workers in a given sample have had one or more accidents. So let's think about one given sample only. All right? So if I let x be the number of workers uh, has one or more accidents, you know, therefore, x, just for one group, one particular 150 people, is a binom is binomially distributed sample of 150 and success rate of 0 0.29. All right, this is now looking at binomial distribution in a given, if any given sample. So you've got to think about the question, we're not looking at p-hat at the moment, we are looking at just one sample. Think about the layering of the questions. So with one, with that one sample, you know that p less than 10 is that, which is 1.55, 1 times 10 to the 5 minus 12. Use your uh, class pack. And you know that binomial is discrete. Oh so if less than 10 will be less than or equal to 9. Numbers, no. Right? I can't do 0 to 10. Sorry? I can't use binomial CD here. Yeah. 0 to 10. It's 0 to 9. 0 to 9. Because this inclusive in the class Because it's inclusive and I'm not, not including it's 10. Discrete, so All right. This is discrete. Less than 10 workers. Not not less than or equal to less than 10 workers. All right, now, let's think about B. B explains um, why it may be appropriate to, to approximate the distribution of B hat using a normal distribution. All right, now you know that the success rate P is 0.29, and you know the sample is 150. You, know, you don't know anything else. So in this situation, you need to use this. NP and N times 1 minus P. Right. And both of them are greater than 10, therefore you can actually uh, estimate. Alright, you need to use this information now. Is it greater than or equal to 10? Sorry? Is it greater than or equal to 10? Or greater than or equal to 10, yeah. I did, oh, I did write it down. It's greater than or equal to 10. Both of them are greater than or equal to 10. It's actually greater than 10 straight away. So therefore, we can, uh, uh, it is appropriate to approximate the distribution of P hat using a normal distribution. All right? Now, so therefore, we know the expected value of P hat we can work out the variance of uh, P, P hat. And we can actually write what P hat is. We'll understand the deviation, the variance. And with that, P hat is uh, less than 10 over 150, which is really small. So if you compare D and A, it's actually negligible because you can see that the percentage probability is very, very low. To the power of minus 10, the previous one is to the power of minus 15. Yes? So it's low and therefore it is negligible. Last example, example 5. Sorry, can we see the answers from the previous one? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> So could you also say for part B, um, that the sample size is sufficiently large? Because mm. it says... Well, we don't know the distribution though. Oh, okay. We don't know, the, we don't know whether um, the distribution is... Uh, symmetrical. It's uh, whatever you call it, it's um, symmetrical. Yeah, but it could, it's... 
explain why it may be appropriate. So Maybe appropriate. It's a fish you, you you don't know you don't know the distribution of the pH, so you can't say that you've got to use that. You've got to use the MP and uh, and uh, yeah. and times one minus P. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So that's 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 the best way of justifying it. Yeah. All right. Last example. Example five. A battery manufacturer took random samples of 250 of a particular type of batteries. And it was found that 215 lasted longer than 60 hours. Calculate the value of P had a sample proportion. It has to be between 0 and 1. You know that it's 215 divided by 250, which is 0 0.86 P hat. Now, from there, we should be able to work out um, the distribution of P hat by using expected value. This time, we have to use expected value of P hat as 0 0.86 because we don't know P. So just an estimate. Yeah, it's just an estimate. Even this estimate, you have to use estimate, and then you can work out the uh, standard deviation of uh, uh, P hat, which is at 0 0.0219. And therefore, p hat is that. p hat is normally distributed with the expected mean of 0 0.86 and a standard deviation of 0 0.0219 square. So, doesn't the expected value have to be um, around 0 0.5? Uh, for, it, for it to be normal, uh -huh. but at the NP is no, greater than ten. Because you can you can look at okay, NP is greater than ten and one thing. No, not only that, you you can look at the the uh, remember the situation I told you when you can the central limit theorem. You can look at this, look at that, or it's actually forces this bit here, and that looks a bit. It looks like. Um, um, normal distribution. You are using a sample proportion. You are not looking at original data now. You are looking at the sample proportion. You are looking at the distribution of the p hat. Yeah, okay. Sure. Alright. So, therefore, in this case, you can write that down. It's normally distribution with a mean of 0 0.86 and 0 0.029. So, you can see that it's not, no, it's, it's, localized in that area already. It's localized in certain area. It's not over the whole population you're looking at. It's the mean and you're, you're just taking that p hat as the yeah. as the normally distributed. And therefore you can work out part C and since P hat greater than 0 0.09 is zero uh, whatever the manufacturing claim is unlikely. The probability is so small Therefore, you can say it's unlikely. That's a likelihood. <laughs> so most of the time, you can see that if the probability is that small, you can say that it's unlikely. You're looking at the what we look at the sample based on the sample. We've got to think about use, using this sample as the population. So we've got to force. Uh, we are forced to use the central limit theorem where we've got to estimate that. It has to, it's normally distributed with a mean of 0.86 and a variance of 0 0.219 square. All right, I'm going to stop here. Ask me any question. So I go to the bathroom. Yep.